The sound you can hear in the background is the squealing of a very dead HP fan. And this laptop's also suffered another injury, an expanding lithium ion battery, which is very dangerous, which is why I've already removed it from the laptop. So I'm now going to show you how to replace those fans and put a new battery in this laptop. We'll start by removing the five screws on the underside, which is relatively simple. And once you've removed those, the back plate will actually pop off relatively easily. The fans and heatsink are removed as a single assembly. To do this, you remove the screws holding it down. There's a small sticky tab that attaches it to the case. This will need to be unstuck. Then it should only take a small amount of effort to remove the whole assembly. It's now only held on by the stiction from the thermal paste on top of the CPU. Each of the fans has a small connection to the motherboard. This plug is tiny and quite delicate. To remove it, you need to pull it directly up. As you can see, it's a very small four pin socket and the plug fits directly over the top as a push downward fit. The first thing we're going to look at is replacing the two fans on the heatsink. So first we've got to remove the old fans and fit these two new ones. The first thing I'm going to do is clean the old heat paste off the heatsink. Hope you'll agree that's looking a lot cleaner. To do this next part I'm going to need some assistance from a pair of glasses because removing the fans is quite a fiddly job. Each of the fans has two very small screws, one of which is hidden behind this piece of foam, and exactly the same on the other side. Each fan is also retained by a very small, almost invisible copper tab, which is painted black. We'll remove the fans one at a time, starting with the two retaining screws. If we then gently release the tab, the fan then becomes free. If we then bend back the tab we released, making sure not to bend it too far as these could break off. We then do the same on the other side, removing the two screws, releasing the tab. Additionally, there is one screw that goes through both the fan body and the heatsink, and this is removed by taking away the small plastic retaining washer and taking the screw out. The fan should now come away relatively easily. In this case, it was held in place by some bits of sticky foam and a lot of dust. Now, to give the heatsink a really good clean to get rid of all the dust and debris that's stuck between these fins. Now we've got all that nicely cleaned up, we can remove the new fans from their packaging and fit those to the heatsink. Installing the new fans is pretty much the reverse of removing the old ones. We clip them back in place, we replace the screws, two in each fan, and then finally put back the screw that goes through the fan body and the heatsink, and holding that in place with the retaining washer. And there we go, new fans installed. Next, utilizing the heat paste, we need to put the heatsink and fans back into the laptop. In a similar way to what we did with the heatsink, we need to remove the old paste from the top of the CPU and GPU packages. It's worth taking this opportunity to remove any excess debris or dust. Before reinstalling the heatsink, we need to apply some new thermal paste. Avoid getting any on the laptop motherboard, that's the blue section, as some thermal pastes can be conductive. To reinstall the fan and heatsink assembly, tilt it at about 45 degrees and push it underneath the case first. Then push it down until it's on top of the CPU. You can then tighten up all the screws. In order to pull the heatsink down onto the CPU evenly, tighten each of the screws a little bit in turn, slowly tightening the whole thing up. 
Now we can reconnect the fans to the motherboard by connecting the tiny 4-pin connector which slides flat down onto the pins. And repeat for the other fan. Now you can replace the semi-sticky piece of plastic that sits on top of the fan. I believe this is just here for noise and vibration reduction, but if you know different, then please let me know in the comments. To reinstall the battery, you need to offer it up at about 85 to 90 degrees, with the connector lined up with its corresponding socket. You can then push the connector in and lay the battery down into its final resting place. If the battery doesn't appear to be sitting properly, then don't force it. If you've got something underneath it accidentally, you don't want to pierce the battery. Once we're happy the battery is sitting correctly, we can reinstall the five retaining screws. That's everything back inside the laptop as it should be. We can now reinstall the cover. We can do that by pushing it in at the front first and then clipping it down at the back where the screen hinges are. We can then finally reinstall the five retaining screws. To test this, we're gonna plug in the charging cable and that should give us an orange charging light, which in this case, it does. We should be able to power the laptop on and we expect to see the white error screen telling us that the system time is invalid. As you can see, we've got the screen we expected and there's no awful sound coming from the fans anymore. If you've enjoyed this video or found it useful, then please click like to let myself and YouTube know. I've been Andy and thanks for watching.